welcome biologists to this session where we're going to take a look at translocation which occurs within the phloem. Now the phloem is a vascular bundle, part of vascular bundle inside a plant we have the phloem and the xylem. Now the phloem transports a similar from source to sink. The similates are sucrose and amino acids. Um, now we transport sucrose instead of glucose in the plant because sucrose is less reactive than glucose so therefore it's the preferred method um, of transport rather than using glucose. Now a source, this is where the sugars are made in the plant. Now don't forget that glucose is made in photosynthesis and that obviously occurs in the leaves. So the leaves could be a source but also things like um, a carbohydrate source, source such as starch in the roots. If starch is broken down that will also release carbohydrates and mono and disaccharides. So therefore depending upon what's happening in the plant the source could either be the leaves or the roots. The sink is basically anywhere in the plant where these carbohydrates, sugars or amino acids are being used. So sugars are used in respiration, which can occur anywhere in the plant. But also these carbohydrates could also be used to put back into storage, for example, starch in the roots. So here we have our phloem and we have the assimilates moving from source. I think we need to know about how the assimilates get into the phloem in the first place. So this part is active loading. So what happens first of all is probably a better diagram at the bottom here is that hydrogen ions are actively transported out of the companion cells here into surrounding cells um, or the surrounding tissues. Um, then what happens is the hydrogen ions will move back into the companion cells, but they will use a co-transporter protein and they will bring with it either sucrose or an amino acid, not both together, just one. Um, and this process facilitates a diffusion because it's going from a high to a low concentration gradient and it's using a protein. So the sucrose will then diffuse from the companion cells into the sieve tube elements through the plasmodes mater. And once the sucrose is now in the sieve tube element, uh, we can now move on to the mass flow hypothesis. And what happens in this bit is because the sucrose has moved into the sieve tube element, this will lower the water potential of the sieve tube elements. And therefore, water is now going to move into this area via osmosis, either from surrounding tissues or from the xylem the water is going to come from. Now, because the water has moved into the sieve tube elements, this is going to cause an increase in the hydrostatic pressure inside of the sieve tube elements here at the source. So here, they're gonna get an increase in that hydrostatic pressure. Okay, so at the sink, which is um, where the sucrose in this case is being used up, um, the sucrose is gonna leave, usually via diffusion because it's going from a higher concentration inside the phloem to a lower concentration outside. Now, because the sucrose is moving out of the phloem, it means that I'm gonna get an increase in water potential inside of my sieve tube elements, which means that water is gonna leave via osmosis. Now, that might go back into the xylem, but it might go back into surrounding tissues. But either way, because I've got water leaving via osmosis, because I've got water leaving my sieve tube elements, this means I'm gonna get a decrease in the hydrostatic pressure inside of my sieve tube elements. So because I have a, a high hydrostatic pressure here at the source and a low hydrostatic pressure here at the sink due to this movement of the sucrose and then therefore the water, I, assimilates will move from the source to the sink down the hydrostatic pressure gradient by mass flow. And that is everything you need to know about translocation. You start off with active loading and then you move on to the mass flow hypothesis. Now, normally in an exam, they really like asking about one part of that process, either the active loading or the mass flow hypothesis. So here's an example of an exam question if you want to pause it and have a go. It's really important when we're doing exam questions to read all the information and try and annotate and highlight where we can. So, for example, in this particular question, I might label the diagram. I might also circle keywords like describe and also active loading. So here is the mark scheme. And as you can see, a lot of the points on there, we, we mentioned there in the video. So guys, good luck with your exams, all the best, and try and remember to use as much scientific terminology in your answers to describe your answers. Good luck.